Welcome back to Late Agenda. The US spying saga has widened, not just showing that the world's most powerful nation spied on its closest European ally, German Chancellor Angela Merkel's private mobile phone, but that Australia may be implicated in helping the United States spy on some of our close neighbours. I caught up earlier with Eugene Robinson, a columnist and associate editor at the Washington Post, who's in Australia for the Public Knowledge Forum at the US Study Centre at Sydney University. The US spying saga has now spread worldwide. It's implicated Australia too. But is it really anything out of the ordinary? Well, I think it is, actually. As you know, the United States has had a very close intelligence relationship with us, with Australia, New Zealand, Britain and Canada in particular. Uh, theoretically, they share and they share it all intelligence and, and theoretically don't spy on one another, but we'll find out if that's true, I think, eventually. Um, but I, mean, I think this goes further than, than certainly what we knew about it. And, um, uh, and and maybe even if the difference is just that we know about it now, we can't kind of unknow about it, and we have to ask about the implications of, of this sort of cooperation against third party third countries. The U.S. is the biggest, most powerful country in the world, though. Hasn't it always spied on its enemies and probably its allies alike? It's just the technology that might have improved. Well, you know, I, I think that may be true. On the other hand, some of the Allies don't seem to think they were being spied on. Angela Merkel does not seem to, to, to think uh, that it was just business as usual that she was being uh, spied on, uh, apparently for a decade by the NSA, even before she became chancellor. Um, and to the extent that that complicates our relationship with, with Germany, and it has, uh, it's a big deal and something that I think policymakers in the United States really need to look at. You've written a number of columns on this. One says that the NSA, the National Security Agency, is out of control. Why do you say that? I do believe it's out of control. I believe that as technology has improved, the ability uh, to capture immense, unimaginable volumes of information, which you or I would consider personal information. Who, who, who do I call on the telephone? How long do I talk to them? Or whatever. Um, beyond the fact that they can actually go to the actual conversations if they want to. They say they don't, but they can. As, as that improved, and also the ability to store all this information you know, on these giant server farms that, that NSA. Uh, you know, it, 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 bureaucracies tend to do what they can until t somebody tells them to stop. Uh, and I think if this is a bureaucracy that is, is seeking something akin to omniscience about communications in the world. But would you say there's no rationale, there's no good reason to do that? Because, of course, several Republicans came out and said, well, basically, Europe should be pleased. The US has saved, you know, many, many lives because of this. I, I do think there is no rational reason to do this. And, and I think it, a little thought and a few back-of-the-envelope calculations will, um, will tell you that if you're gathering such huge volumes of information, and you're trying to use that to tell you who's a terrorist and who's not, you're going to get so many false positives out of that that, it, that, it, that they're going to swamp the real terrorism that will, that will be going on. So instead, what you're going to do is get a tip from some more conventional intelligence um, method, and you're going to go into this huge database, and then, and then you're going to follow a specific person. So, but then, then you don't really need that database in the first place. You don't need to have it. You can go to um, the communications company and you can subpoena the records relating to this person or that person because they're under suspicion and you can get them. Um, and, and, I, and I don't think there's a problem with that. What I think there's a problem with is kind of scooping up everybody's information and declaring that you have the right to keep it and search it and do whatever you want with it for as long as you want, uh, and nobody has any say, say in that. I think that's out of control. Has President Obama been damaged by this? You know, um, in a political sense, not that much. Um, I, the, the people who have been objecting to this have been mostly Democrats, uh, mostly his party, uh, and they've expressed dis disappointment in him. But frankly, for these voters, the Republicans are not an alternative, and m many of the Republicans are more hawkish on this subject 
Anyhow, there is an interesting um, uh, asterisk, though, because some on the Republican far right, the Tea Party wing, have also expressed deep skepticism about uh, this sort of uh, massive invasion of privacy, and, and especially about the way it was done. I mean, this is, has been authorized by secret courts meeting in secret sessions where only the government is represented, and we're not even allowed to know how they are interpreting our Constitution and our laws. Um, that, that's not supposed to be the American way. And uh, you know, President Obama says he welcomes uh, the debate about this. Um, one might ask how we were going to have this debate if Edward Snowden hadn't told us the basic facts because President Obama didn't tell us. Uh, but now that we're having it, um, I hope we end up in a different place from where we are now. Just finally, I mean, do you think there is an importance in our community for people like Edward Snowden, who really had to risk his life and liberty to get this information out, and yet the US government would say he's now an enemy? Yes, and I, and I, and I think, you know, and, and I've gone back and forth on this, because clearly he broke the law. Um, whistleblowers often break the law, even if only in a technical sense by releasing classified information. But I think whistleblowers are necessary, and that is what he is. He saw a, a situation that he thought was out of hand and, and, and ran counter to our founding documents uh, and most Americans' understanding of what the law allowed and what was being done. Uh, he, he revealed this information. Um, uh, some say he should have stuck around and, and taken the consequences in the United States. Uh, I frankly think because of this administration's record of prosecuting whistleblowers uh, with the most draconian statutes that, Im that imply life in prison, um, I, I think his decision to flee is, becomes more understandable. And it's not like he's living a picnic. He's, in, you know, he's exiled in Russia. Um, but I, I absolutely, I think there's a role for these people, and I wish this administration would recognize that. And that was Eugene Robinson, syndicated columnist with the Washington Post, here for the US Studies Centre at the University of Sydney's Public Knowledge Forum, which was at the Opera House today. That's it for Late Agenda. Thanks for your company. Paul Murray Live is next.